rotational kinematics. So our goals for this session are the following. First, we'll compare straight line motion to rotational motion, and then we'll introduce a set of variables that we apply to rotating out objects. These are analogous to the position, velocity, and accel acceleration variables we used for straight line motion. So, how do we describe the motion of rotating objects? Objects that travel along circular paths. Well, let's first look at the parallels between straight line motion and rotational motion. So, compare the motion of a ball that's thrown straight up into the air and a disk which has a counterclockwise initial angular velocity and a clockwise angular acceleration. That's similar to the ball which has initial velocity opposite in direction to its acceleration. Okay, so which motion do the graphs in the simulation correspond to? We'll see a set of graphs. All right, so here we go on the graphs. So we'll see the motion first. So you can see the ball goes up and down, and the disk goes part way around and then back. And then we'll try plotting some graphs. And so if we plot the position graph, we get a lovely parabola. And if we plot also the velocity graph, then we get straight line sloping downward. And if we do position, velocity, and acceleration, you can predict what's on the acceleration graph. And we'll see that one in a second. And that's a lovely line, horizontal line, around minus 10. And the point of this is that, in fact, the graphs can go with either one of those motions. Okay? So if we have position in meters and velocity in meters per second and acceleration in meters per second squared, then it fits the motion of the ball. If instead we go to radians and radians per second and radians per second squared for position, velocity, and acceleration, then the graphs are a perfect fit for the motion of the disk, in fact, which is very interesting. Okay, so along with this, let's say we have a point, and you might want to pause the video here so you can really read it. Let's say we have a point on a wheel that's spinning. Choose a point. Are there any other points on the wheel at that same instant that have the same speed as the first point? What about the same velocity? Okay, so pause it and see which answer you think is right. Now, if you kind of plot the velocity values, sort of do vectors on the spinning wheel, you can see that uh, there are definitely points that have the same speed, and there are all the points at the same radius from the center, and there are absolutely no points at all that have the same velocity as one another. They might have the same direction, but they wouldn't have the same uh, magnitude, or they might have the same magnitude, but not the same direction. So each point has a unique velocity. There are, in fact, billions and billions of velocity vectors attached to that spinning object. However, every point on the wheel has the same angular velocity. There's just a single value of the angular velocity. That's the rate at which a point sweeps out an angle. So in this picture, those points are all going through 45 degrees in the same amount of time. Okay, so we have sort of a natural set of variables, rotational variables, that fit this motion. So with angular position, we usually label that as theta. We use units of radians. Remember that pi radians is 180 degrees. Angular displacement, delta theta. Angular velocity, that's omega. Omega is delta theta over delta t, units of radians per second. These are totally equivalent to, uh, totally parallel to the position and velocity definitions. And then we have another one that's going to be um, our angular acceleration. And then for direction, we do use clockwise or counterclockwise a lot, but you can actually say the direction is really given by a right-hand rule. If you curl your fingers on your right hand in the direction the wheel is spinning and put out your thumb, your thumb will point out of the page. That's the true direction of the angular velocity in the picture. Then there's the angular acceleration. Just like A is delta V over delta T, alpha is delta omega over delta t. Okay, so let's consider speeding up versus slowing down. So in A here, we've got the disk speeding up. A point on the disk has both a centripetal acceleration toward the center and a tangential acceleration tangent to its motion around the circle. 
The centripetal acceleration depends on the angular uh, speed, omega, whereas the tangential acceleration is connected to the angular acceleration, alpha. If the disk is slowing down instead, then we reverse both the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration. But the centripetal acceleration, if it was the same omega, would be exactly the same as it was before. Okay, so we're going to look at some analogies. So we've got position velocity acceleration. For straight line motion, we often use x, v, and a. And the equivalents in rotation are theta, omega, and alpha. And the connection here is that theta is distance over radius, omega is tangential velocity over radius, alpha is tangential acceleration over radius. Yes, the T stands for tangential. And then we have our set of constant acceleration equations, and there's some on the left that we are very familiar with, and there's a totally equivalent set on the right, where you simply replace all the V's by omegas, all the A's by alphas, and all the X's by thetas. And again, don't forget to use the appropriate positive and negative signs. But we use them just the same way we use the equations on the left for straight line motion. Okay, so there is a nice introduction to what we call rotational kinematics. The end.